Hello, everyone, and thank you for listening to this episode of the Refold Podcast, where we talk about everything related to language learning. My name is Clayton, also known as George Pig, and I manage the community here at Refold. Today, our guest is Koenig. Some of you may recognize him from the Japanese learning community. He's a native Portuguese speaker who has also learned English and Japanese through immersion. Yeah. All right, Koenig, it's great to finally have you on. Hey. Hi, George. How are you doing? I am doing okay, a little bit under the weather, as per the usual, but uh, yeah. So, Koenig, do you want to introduce yourself, like your background, um, some of the volunteer stuff that you've done for Refold, your background with languages, things like that? Oh, okay, George. Um, first of all, I'm Koenig. I'm from Brazil, São Paulo. Eu falo português, nativamente. Uh, I've been learning English since I was... Uh, it was, I know, since I know myself, since, since I have conscious, because when I remember playing video games in English when I was like about three years old, but I really started, started being a, uh, more, inter more, I started to immerse more in English when I was my teenage years. Um, and I learned about refold when I was when I was 18 years old, and I want to learn Japanese. Um, and I, Jap, Jap, and I learned ja, and now I'm learning Japanese. Um, long time trying to improve, perf, not long time trying to improve my English. And uh, I have done some things for refold, like for example, I. I was a, a helper in the Japanese server. Server now I kind of got demoted, <laughs> uh, and I help it a lot in the in the refold English to Portuguese translation. Right, you're instrumental in helping getting the um, the roadmap and things in yeah. Portuguese. Mm -hmm. Right. So thank you for that, hmm. and. Do you want to talk about your background with Japanese? So, um, obviously, you're a native Portuguese speaker, but you have heritage in Japanese, right? Like your family's right. your yeah. background. Yeah, I can say that only my my grandma was born in Japan and came here to Brazil, and my mother and my mother learned. A bit of Japanese, a really basic one, I can say. With her, sometimes like really simple words, simple phrase, simple sentences, and I really, and and she kind of like this, like I kind of, she kind of, uh, how can I say, yeah, uh, okay. Talk a little, little, little bit of Japanese with me when I was like uh, a child. So really, I can say that I I learned anything from Japanese because because I had nothing because it really was like four words that I remember remember from hearing from then her. And my and my father was also Japan. Uh, well, my father had also a a. a uh parents that parents that spoke Japanese but he also learned, didn't learn a lot really basic phrase sentence and I also didn't learn anything from Japanese from then so basically I never learned anything from Japanese from my parents from my parents and and I can say mm -hmm. that, that I got interest oh can you, you will say uh, you say anything all right. Yeah, you're audible. I I can see you and I can hear you. I, okay. Um, and my and I start really con get in contact with Japanese when I was uh, when I was in high school and second grade and because I was watching anime, I, be, I turned into a weeb when I was in the second year of high school. And of course, I was okay. I was immersing. I was watching so, so you're a Japanese Brazilian 
and yes. you speak Portuguese as your native language, and you didn't really have that much contact with Japanese. Um, mm -hmm. So you're, you're what they refer to as a Nikkei Burajiru Jin, I believe, in Hi. Japanese, right? Uh, yes. So, uh, and your family does have some roots in Japan, but just like I've got family from, you know, um, other countries as well, I do not speak their language, right? I grew up in the States. I speak English. Mm -hmm. um, and you did not start learning Japanese until you became a weeb in high school. Yeah, that, I can say uh, I started learning because it was English subs, so I could learn, get some English subs, so I can risk the call it immersion, but like, ah, oh, that's the good thing, it's so scary! We just run out of Naruto, and stuff, just stuff. But, and then, when I was 18 years old, I I learned about Refold, and and since, and then I, everything clicked to me, like how I learned English, how I learned, how easy I was English test when I was in high in school, in high school, middle school, whatever, was, and was pretty intuitive. And then, oh, I, I would join it. I would join this community. I would start learning Japanese by watching anime with all subs. And then, and then here I am. I've now I'm still studying Japanese. I'm, I'm trying to output, but I don't have no, I don't have time, and I got kind of a bit of of that like motivation with with Japanese. To, to All play. right. So, Kernick, what is it like being stage three in Japanese versus your English ability? Uh, uh, like, how how do they compare? What is it like since you have learned not one but two? foreign languages oh really i can for once i can say both my english and let's for my english and japanese are not really that good i don't have a good pronunciation in both of them i really can say i, I have the perfect one i can see people can see i know the native from my pronunciation alone and sometimes i really like the words for like the words in both languages, something like you can see now. Sometimes I, I try to think about the language, but I can say that in Japanese, I really have a, a much, much, much smaller vocab than my English. Well, I can, even though I can watch an SOL, SOL or Slice of, of Life anime with without subs and comprehending com perfectly, I can watch any other, I don't know. A uh, physics like uh, quantum physics lecture in English and no, I mean Japanese, and and make sense of anything. I mean, I, mean, I don't know anything about quantum physics, but still, it is it just levels of comprehension that are off. But um, I I can say that yeah. In, uh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's all about, about, I can see my difference in, in Japanese English. Also, in Japanese, it's more slower and more hard to say some things, but uh, yeah, I, I can say because um, I just recent, recently graduated from it, so uh, what, uh, so I can say, yeah, yeah. And being that you're in Brazil, I assume that you probably learn English in school uh, to yes. some degree. Yes. Okay. And do you feel like that is a whole different experience than essentially learning Japanese from scratch over the past couple of years? Oh, yes. It really is. First of all, I don't have tests. tests. So whatever, I don't need to study anything. And actually, in English, I never studied for English tests. And I still agree. Almost perfect score a lot every test that I did in high school. And, and um, there's huge with the difference between English and Japanese. I can see that is there is a, a lot of uh, more uh, it makes I don't know I can say it's just it makes more sense for me for learning Japanese and from from internet and 
and uh, there's a lot of difference with Japanese. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Uh, just kind of nervous here. <laughs> okay, so oh, what no I'm, what I was talking about? I was talking about uh, the difference between Japanese learning and English learning. If you felt the school, right? Right, because you know, Japanese. You've essentially, despite being ethnically, you know, of Japanese descent, it's you've essentially started learning it as basically an adult at 18 years old from the internet. Whereas with English, uh, not only is it closer to Portuguese, Portuguese. in a lot of ways, uh, you also learn it all throughout school, and then I'm sure, you know, there's just this natural urge to learn English in the world. Uh, I could, yeah, but I don't know. I I really sense sense it a more more progress in Japanese than English from than all the eighteen years of of English and just one year of Japanese. I can really see the huge leap from stage zero to three while in English. I really didn't know what. What I was in a, in age, like uh, in in high school, I I kind of like it a, a bit of English, but I also started watching more English YouTube videos in about Minecraft, like every ASL that every ASL learning English with Minecraft. Like, come on, hmm. and uh, but. In high school, I really didn't, didn't knew didn't knew about how much I learned in English. So, like, I can I can't really see it. Uh, the Jap in Jap I can't really see it because in Japanese I really can I can see how how far I can can go. Oh, how much I I have came from a new and to to stage three, which is Japanese for talking, for speaking, outputting, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and that's it. Um, I can't really think about a lot of it, but mm, that that's okay. Oh. I think. I, but with Japanese, you can really see where you came from because you started yeah. from zero. And have gotten to where you're starting to output and have conversations, mm -hmm. right? Right. Whereas, was with English, you kind of always had English a little bit. You know, it was always there in the background with school. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you can't really see where you came from as much. Yeah, right. Yeah, I was really in doubt with uh, if I was close to native in English or or just stage four in English. But but uh, as I what. Well, uh, listening to my own records of my own voice, I can see I not near as close, but now I have some guidance on, on it, on perfecting my accent and stuff like that. What are your goals with English? So, you know, usually at Refold, we don't recommend learning more than one language at once. Yeah. Now, obviously, you're conversational in English. We're having a conversation in English right now. Um, but you also have Japanese on, you know, that you're doing. So what is your current goal for each language, for English and for Japanese? So for English, I really want to perfect, to improve my pronunciation and, and my accent and to reach a, reach a really high level, uh, a high level of English uh, speaking ability and maybe try to and also maybe try to uh, how I can say, uh, mm, uh, what? Oh yeah, the I out uh, uh, take the I out test for English, or the what the other English test or English exam is. Uh, let's see here. There's there's IELTS, which is everywhere oh, TOEFL, but TOEFL, the TOEFL. states, and TOEFL, TOEFL test of TOEFL. English as a foreign yeah. language for the states. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I really want to try it, and maybe in the future, if I, I want to work with, I want to work 
to an um, American company that speaks English, so I can use them in my English every day, not some really specific, specific, specific situations like now or in games. Oh, so what's your current language learning routine? Oh, my language learning routine. I just wake up, um, watch some English stuff in YouTube while I'm doing some cars, like waking up, uh, brush my teeth, uh, take a shower, uh, and, and I go to Discord what, on to to practice a bit my English, to practice my English uh, typing, my English output in writing, English my write. <laughs> Sorry. Wait a minute. My English write. <clears throat> I go to Discord and my English write and practice my English writing. And then I go, and then I just do normal stuff like go to school, the, Go to school. Um, sometimes I watch in the while I'm waiting for some classes. I I go well, read some Japanese manga. So we're in between, and I go to the gym after. I'm either doing some manga in Japanese, um, or doing some. Uh, passive listening in Japanese and I go home, I do some code, I do some coding because I also learn coding by just <laughs> three things that I <laughs> like to learn. And English, Japanese and coding. Yes. It's perfect. Perfect. That's the trifecta. The, the triforce of the, of the, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, just, by joke, all right. And I either watch a video in English or Japanese when I go to sleep. And that did my day on language learning. And what is it like being stage three in Japanese? So you're at the point where you can basically understand most slice of life content. I'm assuming if you're stage three, yeah. and you're beginning on, uh, you're beginning to practice output in Japanese, in theory. So what are you doing for your stage three activities? Oh, I'm just watching, uh, I'm just watching YouTube videos in Japanese and watch anime. And for output, I'm going to VR chat, a game where you, where you, uh, where you talk with other people in a virtual world, just like, I don't know, metaverse, but actually good. Like metaverse, but actually good. It's sort of like an avatar based. Uh, it's like yeah. Discord, I guess, but it, with like a three D model type yeah. thing. And I go to the yes, and I go to the Japanese server there. There is so I so I hang out with Japanese people. Like oh, they're they're really cool. Like I try approach them and say oh oh konnichiwa, what you doing? I get. None, no, uh, I mean, none, none is still, no. That mean, oh, yeah. And maybe, maybe, maybe do some jokes and hang out. But they all know that I'm, I'm a foreigner, so, but still, it's really okay. Like, I don't care about, so much about the output anxiety that a lot of people have. But just like, I like to hang out with people. That's it for my mentality for outputting. And do you do any sort of similar activity for English for actually, uh, so you, you, you know, you output, I guess, in the discord servers in English, you mm -hmm, write right. to people in English. Uh, but do you have any sort of speaking activities that you do for English? Oh, I now trying to do some, some shadowing in English. Like I go to a YouTube video and, and watch and try to mimic their voice, their accent, their their uh, pronunciation, their mouth, sometimes if they have a face scan. And, and you can see by the feedback between the difference, between the difference between your voice and the pronunciation, the speech pattern, the everything. 
and the, and the guy you are watching. Yeah, I like it. And and sometimes I try to do some conversing, but I, I need to to set up for English stuff. But in the meantime, I try to do some uh, read out loud um, things like reading reading copas, reading copatas, which is like reading out loud copatas and recording myself and 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 try to see what what is bad with my pronunciation stuff that stuff. All right. And what is it like? How long have you been stage three in Japanese? Oh, I'm I think it is I think um uh, wait, is today is April 14. I find four months, but I not I not I not have been really really practicing a, a lot of times due to time college stuff, but I try with my routine. That's great. So it's taken you about what two years uh, to get to where you can start having conversations in Japanese. Yeah, but I also was immersing like almost six to seven eight hours a day in Japanese. When I was starting, but because I was kind of a neat and not employed in educational training, but but now, but the middle, but in the middle of 2020, 20, 2022, I I got into university or college now, actually, and now I have a little bit less time for for it, and also I put coding and. And try to improve my pronunciation in English with it. So I really my time with it got really smaller. So Yeah, that's normal. Um at Refold we like to see like we expect maybe two hours a day from your average adult who's like got a job or in university or something. Um right. two hours a day is like the sort of what we we would expect for somebody to to get conversational in a language like Japanese after a couple of years, right. so definitely being able to spend six or seven hours a day is awesome, but it's totally understandable that you may not be able to do that for the <laughs> for the rest of your life. Yeah, I, I wish, but reality is often disappointing. Reality is often disappointing, so. What is the difference in activities from going from like stage two to stage three? So I personally never really follow the roadmap to the letter. You know, I kind of already joined Refold with some pre-existing ideas in mind. And I don't think I've ever actually gotten good at a language that I, I didn't already have a background in. You kind of started Japanese from scratch, and I guess you followed the, the method totally. What was that like? Oh, going from two to three, I um, well, how's that? I I don't know much. I really, for me, it was a natural natural transition for from for from stage two to three, I guess. Because I I really start really small output up output things in stage two. Like, like I was on Japanese streams, streams like VTubers. Um, but I can, I can see more, um, yeah, uh, gaming streamers, or I don't know. I try to just enter some Discord servers in Japanese more. Uh, and just doing a little bit of output, like, to see how it is, how how is the difference between a uh, um anime or or YouTube and real con real conversations. But when I got to three, I uh, I got my I improved my comprehension. I might, uh I start to be really, really. Uh, I start to be going really deep in in output because because uh, I, 
I like to hang out with people. And going to VR chat was a finding going to VR chat and trying to do something is good for me. Yeah. Now, do you do you only go to VR chat in Japanese, or do you also do it in English? No, I never did any did in English, but just in Japanese. Because What's the I reason am... for that? What why? Why have you not done it in English? Uh, I don't know. I I just prefer it in Japanese <laughs> for some reason. I don't. Um, I don't I, I already do some English practice English practice in, in in Discord per se. But that's mostly writing, right? Oh, sometimes it's it's speech with voice calls and other stuff. So if you had to uh, estimate, do you track your time? Mm, really? No, no, I don't like it. Tracking time. Yeah, I think it's it's fine. I think uh, someone actually sent me an article this morning about <laughs> how tracking time can turn things into work and uh, people on average derive less enjoyment if they're forced to, you know, track their time and treat yeah. it like they're doing a job. Uh, I certainly fall into that camp. Yeah, I don't know. I like it. You need to just, you just set a, first off, set up the timer, and then you need to follow the timer. And then when you finish the activity, you need to stop the timer and then put in the your time log. And this is just boring for my my opinion so taking a step back and looking at some of your your situation being in brazil what's your opinion on foreign languages in brazil um your experience as a nike uh you know Brajirujin, uh <laughs> things like that so obviously um most you know most Brazilians, I get the impression, are very, very monolingual. Yeah, I can see. Like, if if fifty percent of the Brazilians are kind of illiterate, and like almost five percent is knows English or some sort of other language, and I can see in my, I can see when, I can see when I go to a coffee store, and and there was, oh, I, I, I'm telling a story that I happened in late, like uh, recently, that I was going to a cough store. There was a, a, a English speaker with the talking to with the baristas, and they, and he, and they did, they really didn't understand him. And I need to translate everything from English to Portuguese to and then, and. And it was, uh, I can see that it has a, a bit of, like, of monolingual. Uh, all people just know Portuguese in my country, like, <clears throat> like this. Why do you think that is? So first off, that's really cool that you were able to use your English uh, in real life uh, outside of the internet and actually help someone get their coffee. But why do you think that Brazil is so strictly uh, monolingual? Uh, first of all, uh, kind of public self, like it, there's a really bad education in Brazil. Like the schools are bad, bad I think. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> the school is bad, uh, but I think for much you don't need school, but but there's really no interest in learning English or no, anything. No interest in learning English. Like, there, I, or there is, but people often find themselves on English courses or, or, or I don't know, doing Duolingo to, to learn English. Like, like I can say by my sister in law who is learning English to, to live, live in Canada, to live in Canada. And, and she's doing a lot of English courses. Um, and 
she's been doing this for one year and she still really, really don't know no English. Yeah. So do you think that there's not a lot of immersion or interest in English media in Brazil? I, I, uh, there is interest in learning English, but there's, or, or not, I, I just can so pull, I can just, I do an hypothesis, hypothesis, but yeah, there's not so, I think there's a bit, I don't know, like of interest or just like of way of learning English or just, I, I, I can just see by my older generations where there was no YouTube or Netflix or anything. And the only way was learning English through you no know, classrooms. But there's a little, there's a, there's a, I don't know how I can say it, but I don't really know uh, if there's a lot, but it's, there's a lot of things that I, uh, I don't know, but all right. Um, but uh, I, th I think people just I don't know trust classrooms or really trust classrooms or anything or anything that that, that includes traditional study. And but, how about the media? Even the foreign media is it? dubbed into portuguese yes so there's no subtitles there, there's subtitles in portuguese oh there is subtitles but for real you would you can just read the subtitles and ignore completely the audio like to like okay. watching anime with english subtitles that's the same thing i think so if you had to compare your english ability to the average Brazilians, what would you say the difference there is? Uh, I guess uh, a lot of comprehension stuff, more, more, more comprehension about English media, or my, I have more, or I consume more English media than other people. Where in my YouTube, YouTube subscri sub subscription list, there is a more, there's like a, not only one you. One person YouTuber versus like 80, 81 YouTubers in English. Meanwhile, I think my, meanwhile, I see other Brazilians watching some Brazilian YouTubers that I never actually heard of in my life because I stopped watching it, uh, I don't know, five years ago. So, yeah. But in actual speaking, uh, I, I don't think I, I'm better than then because I feel my pronunciation sometimes my choice of words, my choice of words, bad, and and all this stuff. It does, uh, but I think they're they maybe like more English, more English, English, or they do, or they. How can you say is what is the term? Oh, oh, or they rely a lot on false cognates. Like, you know what is false cognates is? Yeah, like, like a false friend. Yeah, false friend. Where, where like the word, um, where you can see fan fantasy, fantas or fantasia in Portuguese. In Portuguese, fantasia in Portuguese it means costume, like Halloween costume, etc. While meanwhile, in fun fantasy means means uh, I know magic words that mm, magic that's uh, interesting yeah sometimes they see I can see some people so think, fantasia in Portuguese means costume yes or do you do you guys have a word like disfrazo or anything disfrazo what what is that Spanish for for costume I, I don't know no no I don't know in Spanish enough for this for no Okay. Interesting. So they have a lot of issues with uh, false friends, words that are similar. So what do you call fantasy like a genre, like, you know, swords and magic in Portuguese? Uh, same way, fantasia. Like the same word, fantasia means both fantasy, 
and both custom and fantasy in the English way, you can say. But but yeah, but it's true. But sometimes I I can see people using fantasy in the way of of custom, like or I were uh uh like I say a ghost fan fantasia no a ghost fantasy in the last Halloween like like that. The other gotcha. Context. Yeah, that happens a lot, I think. Yeah. So what would your advice be, Kernick, to other Brazilians who want to improve their English, you know, um, to get, you know, obviously you're not perfect, but you're conversational and that's pretty good for a country that's like super duper monolingual like Brazil. Do you have any advice to not even just Brazilians, other ESL speakers? I, I really can't say anything, but just immerse. I really just much more. I don't know. Yes, it just I just don't know. But I don't know. You can just stop what stop watching or reduce the number of time you spent in your net in watching YouTube videos in your net language, but but yeah I don't know, just you much more. I don't I can say a lot. So when it comes to people who are like, like your sister-in-law, who are still learning with traditional methods and not making progress, what uh, would you tell them if you wanted to say, hey, you're not making progress, do what I did? Uh, how, would you, how would you tell that to your sister-in-law, for example? That's a really common story, right? People, they think they need to go to English classes and English school. And um, they don't immerse. They don't consume content. What would your advice to those people be? Oh, uh, I don't know. Just I think it, I can just say, um, not I don't know, not gonna say immerse, but at least I don't know. Uh, I I don't know how I would convince, but as I struggle with it, because I still didn't convince her to start immersing more. But I can say is just get out of your comfort zone. Like, uh, like if you're going to watch, um, um, I know, a Netflix series or a movie, try just switching the language or instead of sub it go no subs or English subs or if you're watching a uh, dub it just sw swap to the English dub you can even try just put the Portuguese subs in the in it but or in it but really to, just to start off like oh like oh I can recognize this word from the classroom or oh I can do or I can can the sentence sentence with of Portuguese with the Portuguese subs if I can close my eyes and just listen to the audio I can I, I can just I can oh I I you can see this moment where oh I can understand it a bit like yeah so actually what we've been calling that uh, with coaching clients is the noticing game. Yeah. So before you actually start to understand like whole sentences, um, you start by just noticing words, right? Right. Yeah. That's why with, with Japanese, I really can't understand any big, complete thing, sentence or the real meaning. With, mm -hmm. But when I was like, I don't know, 20 words that I knew, just 20 words in Yagi. I could just try to do a, uh, I know, recognize the Grenadian game or, oh, like, oh, I thought that the Kenji, that Kenji in Monkey. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. And, yeah, I always use that example of um, Leo Leonardo DiCaprio pointing, like uh, the meme where he's pointing. Oh, yeah. Uh, as oh, sort of like what it's like when you first start learning a language right yeah because you're not going to understand the best no. you can hope for is just recognizing recognizing 
And then, so if I'm if I'm listening to like Brazilian content, I'd be like, you know, blah 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 blah, and like Hosa, okay, farm, right? Farm. And then I'd be like, you know, I would be listening and like, oh, feijoada, okay, food, oh, right? Oh, like feijoada. Um, and that's what I, you know, the best that uh, I could hope for, um, assuming that I were starting to learn Portuguese, just like recognizing right. the words. Um, um, and eventually it all comes together. Right. And yeah, that's why I I I went to translate the, the English port, refer to Portuguese because it's really easier to convince people, I think. Yeah, how was it uh, being involved in the translation process? So right now, the simplified roadmap is in Portuguese, I believe. Yes, it is. I check it before. And I know that you guys were translating the main page also. I, yes, I'm just waiting for a proofreading. And how was that? So... Uh, what's the what was the process like sort of being a volunteer translator um, for refold oh yeah, it was really fun because it's uh, much more your own own language the writing skills than your English skills per se it's like how you translate how you can make a uh, a convincing, a convincing text in in Portuguese with uh, English context. Like, for example, I don't know, there was a a work called I don't know what, what is the name. Oh, what is the what is the the equivalent of input and output in Portuguese? Because if I were to say input, I would, would it would be uh, a lot of things that I that could be related to Portuguese, and we need to choose the word correct word the, the the most the common the commonest word everything mm -hmm. for it and you also you and the rest of the volunteer translator team had to come up with a way of conveying certain immersion learning ideas in portuguese yeah uh, for example i think instead of calling it sentence mining you guys called it extração de frases. Yeah, extração de frases. Uh, extração de frases. So, like, um, you guys had to decide how to translate things. Input, yeah. output, sentence mining. Yeah. But a huge brainstorm. A huge brainstorm of how, how could we... How could make it not sound weird in our own language, but make sense in English. Make, make sense. English not be so far away from the English meaning, but but at the same time, <clears throat> wait a minute. Uh, it was really hard to. It was hard, but I think we did a good job of the the volunteers. Oh yeah, yeah, I think so. And um, <laughs> believe it or not, once in a blue moon. I will get a support ticket on the website in Portuguese. Wow. Um, once in a blue moon. It's usually Spanish and English. But every once in a while, I'll get uh, somebody. Usually they're asking for a deck. They're like, hey, um, we want you know decks in Portuguese. So I think right now we have a community deck that volunteers made for Portuguese speakers learning English. Mm -hmm. um, but that's it. I don't know of any community decks for like, and there's certainly no official decks that we have in Portuguese, right? Yeah. Like JP1K or something. Yeah. Like for English to Portuguese or Portuguese to English? We don't have. Uh, for Portuguese to English. All right. Yeah. I think we don't have, but it could be a really help. But uh... yeah, people, people don't know this. The, um, the Brazilian community of Refold is actually pretty big. Yeah, I kind of surprised it actually. Yeah, I think um, I think Brazilians might be the third or fourth largest population in oh. terms of like country. Yeah, but they're mostly active on the Japanese server. 
Yeah, I, I see a lot. I see a lot of people there. It's really so, really, really. There's a lot of people Portuguese. Really, a lot of people Portuguese. Japan new server. It's kind of ironic because. It, not not so ironic because Japanese, the second highest population of Japan people, Japanese people are on Brazil, is on Brazil. And yeah, there's a lot of enemy and Japanese culture in, in Portuguese, Brazil. And like, oh, like, oh, like always, everybody is a way to do Yeah. I would like to see more support for Portuguese speakers, uh, especially ones who are at a lower level of English. It's hard to get started. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Like more English stuff to watch. I think that. Yeah, I think there's. I need some. Need some. Uh, some more beginner friendly stuff for. For English. And to port to from Portuguese to English. Yeah. Now, uh, do you happen to know there's a YouTuber who I think talks about immersion learning? He's a Brazilian YouTuber. I, I cannot don't know. think of his name. Man, me neither. I don't know anyone. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I cannot think of his name, but I think there is one. Uh, there are some immersion learners who are yeah. like learning English, but I don't think that Refold really has them as an audience. Um, there's this Brazilian guy who does have them as an audience, though. I just can't think of his name. For Japanese or for English? For English. Oh, yeah, because I saw some people in Portuguese in YouTube learning Japanese for for refold. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, just one guy on YouTube. It was cool. Cool video. Yeah, there's some um, there's a Spanish speaking community of Japanese immersion learners as well. Wow. It's quite cool. active. Um it's very interesting to see. So refold were a little bit uh Anglo centric. You know the, the the de facto uh language of operation is english yep yep we could see we could see more of more the hispanic or latino or the latin community raise up yeah so looking here one second here Oh, right. So are you interested in learning any more languages after you get to where you want to be with your Japanese. English and with your and with your Japanese? Mm -hmm. Maybe French. Maybe French. Maybe French. Maybe. So why French? Oh, because my brother is moving to Canada and I, and I always was, I, I saw a bit of French stuff that I like it, like some movies and some, and some cool stuff uh, in YouTube. And it's, uh, believe it or not, Brazil's shares the, uh, a border with France, technically. Hey, uh, yes, Guiana Francesa with Brazil, or mm -hmm. French Guyane. I don't know what how is in English. I think it's French Guyane, maybe. Yes. And uh, that's actually the largest border that France shares with another country, by the way. Yo, is with Brazil. Yes, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. but that's kind of like far away, right? You're in São Paulo, which is really yeah. far from. Yeah. Is I from our south, southeast, and Guyana is like in the north, Brazil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So learning another Romance language will not be as difficult as learning Japanese. Yeah, as I can see by trying to read some 
text in Spanish and what listen to a bit of Spanish in YouTube, yeah, it's, it's really close to Portuguese. I guess. <laughs> like, oh yeah, for sure. Autom I automatically to say I think sometimes in Spanish by knowing Portuguese. For sure. Um, I was surprised at how much Portuguese I understood uh, just from having, you know, an intermediate level in Spanish. Yeah. A lot of, yeah. A lot of I really like Portuguese YouTube. I like the stuff that comes out of uh, Mozambique and Angola. I think it's really cool. Yeah, I never watch it, but I never watch it, but it um, may be cool. Well, it's just interesting because, you know, in Spanish, it's all pretty much in Spain or Latin America. And with Portuguese, you have Brazil, but you also have a couple of countries in Africa. Um, Portugal. And, and Portugal. Um, and that's really neat. Now, you mentioned earlier that you were planning on taking like the TOEFL or the IELTS. Do you plan on taking the uh, the JLPT at some point? Yeah, that's of course, man. I want to do the anyone. And my my next goal after I actually got a job, uh, I went to so. A... So your goal right now, job, and then after you get all that settled, take the N one. Yeah. So when do you think you'll be taking the N one? Oh, in two years or three. I don't know. It depends, <laughs> but uh, I know one. It will be. It will be soon, and I as I want to also. Maybe in the future, working in Japan as a encoding stuff. And, and just, and anyone will help me a lot if I can do it. For like getting a visa and getting a job. Yeah, even though uh, visa is kind of easier as I have Japanese inheritance. Mm -hmm. but anyway. And do you? Do you still have any like relatives that you talk to who you know of who are in Japan? Yeah, well, I have relatives in Japan, but I don't talk to them too often. And like, the, there is my grandma and my aunt and some other pe other people, my cousins. <laughs> and I don't speak with them often, but when I speak it, I they were really impressed by my Japanese. Like how I couldn't stand there and speak with them. Do you find that because you look Japanese, mm -hmm. people have different expectations? Like if I were to speak Japanese, the reaction might be different than if you spoke Japanese. Oh, that's something that I still need to see. If it, I, I don't know, I know I need to go to a uh, uh, Japanese populated area. In, in Brazil and speak Japanese and see the people reaction. Oh, 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 you so like, oh, you speak Japanese? Oh, oh, are you Japanese? Oh, okay. I need to do this one day. I see, but I can see that uh, as I look Japanese and speak Japanese, I can see much less expectation of me. Uh, get surprised that I speak Japanese. And that's, uh, I don't know, that's uh, impressive. I don't, I can see, like, that's impressive. As, as, I'm Jap as I'm really Japanese and, and I know Japanese and like, go you. And I might just be like, cool. No more cool. Versus you who, who don't look like Japanese and and just start speaking Japanese fluently, and it's a little more impressive. I, I could pass as a Brazilian, though. Uh, yes, you can. You can. Yeah, I would just look like I was from the south. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I um, had a friend, uh, Paulo, and we oh. lived in Mexico together, and. Uh, People always assumed that I was Brazilian and that he was American oh. because he's, he's very, um, he's like from Santa Catarina and he's very not Brazilian acting, you know, stereotypical. He's not very outgoing, not very loud. And uh, people always got us mixed up 
uh, as to who the gringo was. <laughs> that means interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I can see you as a, uh, I don't know, some from Sao Paulo or Santa Cat or so South or mm -hmm. which is Santa Catarina and Rio, Rio Grande, Rio Grande do Sul mm -hmm. or Rio Grande. <laughs> Gaucho. Gau Gaucho. Yeah. Cool. Well, we are about at time. Before we go, Kernick, do you have any advice to wrap up the episode with? Oh, really? Uh, I would say just more smart, but that's a really mimi stuff. But really, yeah, just have fun with the language. Like, uh, I mean, if, if I, I I like to output with people in Japanese, I like to output with people in English. I like to watch anime. Uh, I would like to watch YouTube videos. Like, uh, people have some kind of anxiety or expectation or on on just how learn a language, but really, just have fun. Like, it's a really fun hobby, as I can see. Mm. Say, it's like, uh, so I see a lot of people with output anxiety, like, oh my god. Oh my god! I don't. My English, my Japanese is bad. My I, I, I can't speak and and it really is just. I really, really, you know, really something to be to be worried about. And uh, yeah, you just need to have fun. Like people will understand your your name. You're a foreigner, but you need. But it's fun. Uh, you fuck with people. No matter what, no matter what language, no matter what, what you look and anything, it's fun. Everything's fun. Good. So the advice is immerse more and just have fun. Yeah, it's really it. Yes, yes I can always say this because uh, uh, it's, it's fun. I can say it's, people have enjoyment. It. Oh, for sure. I think it is fun. I agree. It's a, a lifelong hobby of mine. Kernick, yeah, thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, I appreciate it a lot. And I will see the rest of you at the after party. Yeah, and okay. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Ciao, ciao. Sayonara. I want to thank you for listening to this episode of the Refold Podcast. If you're watching the live premiere, you're in luck. Right as it ends, we have an after party over on the Refold Central Discord server. Come join us by using refold.link forward slash join and chat about the episode. If you enjoyed the podcast and would like to hear more, you can find older episodes to listen to on YouTube and Spotify. Let us know what you thought about the video by liking and leaving a comment below. Do you have suggestions for upcoming visitors or requests for particular topics? Please feel free to reach out to me on Discord at georgepig hashtag 5413 or via email at clayton at refold.la. Thank you all for watching and or listening, and I'll see you next week.